This is One on One, a program hosted by African Press International, where we discuss political and social issues. My guest today is Professor Gail Lundestad, the director of the Norwegian Nobel Institute. Professor, welcome to the program. Thank you. Let us talk about the criteria used in determining a worthy candidate for Nobel Peace Prize. Because nowadays, when the prize is given, some groups demonstrate. Can you enlighten our viewers on this, sir? Uh, yes. Uh, Alfred Nobel uh, described three criteria for awarding the Nobel Peace Prize in his will from 1895. One was uh, promoting fraternity between nations. The second was the reduction of standing armies. And the third was the holding and promotion of peace congresses. Uh, so these were very typical criteria in the 1890s, uh, but they are not necessarily uh, easy to interpret uh, in the light of today's concerns. But we all know Alfred Nobel's will, and we all try to pay attention to what he says in his will. Uh, in 2011, the Nobel Peace uh, Prize, uh, the, the Nobel Committee chose to award the prize to three heroines, namely Tawakul Karman of Yemen, Lehman Bogwe of Liberia, and Ellen Johnson Salib, the president of Liberia. The Nobel Committee chose the three because, as they stated, due to their non-violent struggle for women's security and their rights to full participation in peace building in the society. Do you have any information as to their continued success after receiving the prize? Because some people get the prize and they go and relax. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, it's difficult uh, for the committee to know what will happen after they have received the prize. But, of course, most continue along the same tracks. And this has, uh, has been the case very much with the three uh, women you mentioned. I mean, we keep abreast of what they're doing. And um, I even have some uh, personal contact with them. And President Johnson Sirleaf, I mean, she is still continuing her work as uh, president. Leima Bowie is a grassroots activist. Yes. Uh, uh, and uh, Tawakul Karman uh, from Yemen, uh, who was maybe the least well-known of these three, uh, she became very famous almost overnight, uh, in part because of the Nobel Peace Prize. She receives invitations from all over the world. Uh, she, she she speaks out, and she's also very active um, at home then in, in Yemen. So what do you think? You are satisfied with the progress they are still doing? They are still hanging in there, trying to do uh, important uh, things. Uh, let us look at President Ellen Johnson Salif's record from 2006, when she took over the presidency to this day. Corruption is still a big obstacle to development in Liberia a country which remains one of the poorest in the world nearly a decade after the end of the civil war. Is she defeated in uprooting the, this evil? There are many problems uh, in Liberia. Uh, and as you said, I mean, corruption is rampant, uh, and rape is uh, widespread, and Liberia is indeed uh, one of the poorest countries in the world. But I think when the committee gave the Nobel Peace Prize to Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, they emphasized four things. Uh, they emphasized her contribution in trying to bring peace to Liberia, uh, and that has been largely successful. They emphasized uh, her contribution in promoting democracy, and democracy has prevailed. There have been difficulties, problems, uh, but she has been elected and uh, re-elected uh, in um, fair elections. Uh, she has promoted economic growth. Um, country is still poor, but uh, the growth has been uh, significant uh, in the last few years. And she has also been able to introduce uh, some uh, reforms, for instance, education uh, for girls, which is crucial uh, in this context. And we know um, corruption is deep-rooted in many African countries because of selfish leaders who still the government revenue in order to enrich themselves. Do you think it is important for leaders to declare their assets? And will such declaration really help to eradicate corruption in the continent of Africa? Uh, 
oh, it will take very long to eradicate uh, corruption. I mean, corruption is a major problem in, in most of the world, uh, not only in Africa. I mean, uh, take China, for instance, with all the focus on China, corruption is a huge and growing problem in China. Uh, corruption uh, is a huge problem in Russia, uh, in, in uh, southern Europe. So, uh, so corruption has been endemic uh, in many countries uh, throughout history. Uh, but we hope, of course, uh, that progress uh, will be made, uh, and that includes uh, Liberia. But ending such a practice uh, will take time uh, at best. Uh, we just uh, have to hope for the uh, small steps. I think there's a misunderstanding about the Nobel Peace Prize. It's that uh, those who receive it or should receive it, they are all saints. Mm -hmm. So if you, can, uh, if you can find something to blame them for, they should not have received the prize. No. Uh, in my opinion, none of them are saints. I know the Catholic Church has a different view on Mother Teresa. Yes. <laughs> but no, they, they, they are not saints. They are far from perfect. Uh, and we even mentioned this, the chairman of the committee, Torbjörn Jagdahl, mentioned in his uh, Nobel lecture last year that Liberia did indeed have major problems uh, with corruption, with rape, and there were also some question marks about Ellen Johnson Sirleaf and her early contacts with Charles Taylor. So there were question marks, but she had done these four things I, I pointed to, uh, and, and these are very useful steps. Um, that's what the committee emphasizes, useful steps. I mean, not a declaration of sainthood. Uh, President Sally, like you are saying, is doing, um, or rather is moving in the right direction. She decided to fight corruption uh, recently by suspending 46 government officials, yes. including her own son, yes. for failure to declare uh, their access to anti-corruption authorities. What do you think about specifically her action considering the fact that she also dismissed her son or rather suspended her own son? Well, of course she should. I mean, if he's guilty of corruption, of course, um, he should be uh, suspended or punished or whatever. We call it nepotism. I mean, if you, if you give benefits, uh, uh, undue benefits, I mean, to your family, no. It's good, it's good, it's good. That's a good move. I hope uh, African leaders would emulate her on that because of nepotism, especially. You know, uh, so many families are getting jobs even without qualifications in many countries. Well, we see that in, in many countries that uh, once uh, somebody uh, uh, becomes the leader, uh, they award uh, their friends. I mean, in all kinds of uh, ways. Uh, uh, and very often in illegal ways. Of course, I mean, uh, the, the government uh, should uh, be run uh, on a fair uh, and uncorrupt uh, basis. And it, you sh it should not lead to the awarding of jobs and giving away money to persons who are not uh, qualified to have these jobs. African people, the majority, so to say, believe that President Salif has brought peace and positive economic development to her country. Those positive to her actions in building her country applaud her for prioritizing education and democracy. But your own official Norwegian broadcasting services through their program, Brennpunkt, recently accused her and castigated her track record. What is your comment on this? Uh, there was nothing new in the program. Uh, of course, we know that um, Liberia uh, is still a quite corrupt country. We know that there, there is a tremendous number of rapes. Uh, we know that there have been uh, problems uh, in Liberia's uh, history. Uh, and as I said, uh, even the chairman of the committee mentioned in his Nobel speech uh, Johnson Sirleaf's early association with Charles Taylor. So I don't think there was anything really new uh, in the program, but they didn't say much about her achievements. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the bringing of peace to, to the country, uh, the emphasis on democracy, uh, the economic growth, and uh, some very significant social reforms. 
So again, yeah, no, she's definitely no saint, but she has done very useful things, um, and that's why she uh, received and indeed deserved the but, Nobel Peace Prize. But it seemed like the program, Brennpunkt, was actually attacking the Nobel Committee, like they are corrupt in, in a way, favoring some leaders and so on. Not necessarily, like you say, they did not focus on her positive achievements. Uh, I saw the program where yeah. you, you participated. It seemed like they're attacking you for, in the way you choose these leaders who get the prices. They accused us of uh, having made not a very good selection. That's fine, of course. It's uh, totally okay to criticize the uh, Norwegian Nobel Committee. We are criticized every year. There's nothing wrong in that. Um, but we answer as best we can, and we think we have a very solid and a very respectable record uh, through these uh, 111 years that the committee has worked. Um, on, on that note, she is accused by the same program for being, but you mentioned earlier, to have supported Taylor, the man now who, is, who has been found guilty. Um, what do you think of that association? Well, um, Johnson Sirleaf has been very open about this herself. I mean, she has admitted uh, that she did indeed have uh, contact with uh, and supported Charles Taylor uh, in, in an early phase, but then she changed. Uh, and I think the sources that we saw uh, in this program, they were connected to Charles Taylor. And obviously, they, they want to throw dirt on anybody uh, so that they can reduce the responsibility that uh, duly belongs to Charles Taylor. So I thought they, uh, um, the, the, the sources uh, were not uh, very reliable sources, in, in my opinion. Um, homosexuality, let us now turn to human life. Homosexuality is accepted in Norway. The center of when you give the prize. Um, do you uh, try in one way to influence the African leaders to also treat their people humanly when it comes to their lifestyles? Now I'm thinking about Nigeria, Liberia now. Uh, the committee very strongly supports uh, human rights. Uh, political rights, uh, economic rights, uh, social rights, uh, and increasingly that should include uh, also rights for uh, homosexuals. But we understand uh, that this is a very uh, challenging step uh, in an African uh, context where prejudice on this point is very, very strong. Uh, uh, but we hope that as democracy become, and human rights become stronger in Africa, uh, this will also include uh, full rights uh, for homosexuals. So you believe she was a worthy, a, a worthy recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize, Sally Bjornsson? Absolutely, yes. Uh, before um, I turn to a few questions only, two or three questions about this year's, uh, this year's Nobel Peace Prize. Um, when I saw the interview, you were, there were also questions about the Nobel Committee awarding the prize to some leaders to encourage them to do something positive. Mm -hmm. um, are we not going away from rewarding somebody who has done something instead of you give me, then I do something good? Uh, For example, well, you, you must always have achieved something. Something must have been done. You cannot just throw out the prize and hope that something good will uh, happen. So there has to be a basis of achievement. Uh, like there was with Johnson Sirleaf. Yes, she had achieved many things, uh, but of course there's of, of, often uh, the additional hope uh, that uh, the laureates will go on also in the future and do significant uh, work. Uh, and, and this was true for Johnson Sirleaf and Tower Kurt Karman and Leima Bowie and, and many others. You said they had achieved something, which is true. But then, why don't you say something about Obama? What did he achieve? He had only been in office for a few months. Uh, he had a, a Obama. yes. Uh, um, he had achieved um, a very significant uh, change in temperature in international relations, and he had underlined the goals, which had really been 
the goals of the Norwegian Nobel Committee throughout its uh, existence. He uh, emphasized multilateral diplomacy uh, through the UN. He emphasized reaching out, dialogue. He was prepared to have dialogue with anyone, uh, including Iran. Uh, he established um, a very uh, ambitious objective when it came to arms control. He wanted to see a nuclear-free world. He wanted to change uh, uh, the envi uh, environmental policy of the United States. So, I mean, um, so he established all these goals which were very much the goals of the Norwegian Nobel Committee and the committee wanted to strengthen him as much as possible in achieving these goals. Uh, the committee of course understood uh, that it would take time to fulfill these goals uh, if they will ever be fulfilled. Uh, and you also have to remember that ideally Alfred Nobel wanted the committee to point to achievements in the preceding year. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, normally impossible for the committee to base a price only on what had been achieved in the preceding year. We normally take a much longer time frame. But in Obama's case, uh, this was really uh, what Alfred Nobel wanted, the emphasis on the most recent years. Who had done the most for peace in 2009 was, was really uh, Nobel's uh, question. And the committee's answer was Barack Obama. What do you say to the critics, before we leave Obama alone, what do you say to the critics who say, uh, because the whole world was kind of excited when the, a black president was elected in America, and that the critics say Norway and Nobel Committee were very excited that they wanted to bring him here to visit. Um, as a world leader, a black president in America, because they were positive claim also. That's why he got the prize. Some critics say so. What do you, what do you, what do you tell those critics? Well, I, I tell them that uh, Obama's objectives uh, and goals were the objectives and goals of the Norwegian Nobel Committee, and that's why they gave him the prize. Let us look at this year's no Nobel Peace Prize, Professor. Speaking to former Prime Minister Shell Magne Bondemic before you release the prize to the European Union. He told API that there were other more worthy candidates than the European Union. What is your comment, taking into account that many demonstrated many demonstrations were organized by some Norwegian people when you you announced the prize? Well, it's uh, we, have, we have freedom of speech in Norway. Anyone can say anything they like. That's fine. Uh, I think uh, the price to the European Union is one of the most uh, obvious uh, prices in our uh, entire history. Uh, I mean, the European Union um, has been very important in transforming Europe from a continent of war to a continent of peace. Uh, many uh, factors. Uh, have helped in this context, but none probably more uh, than the uh, establishment of the European Union. I mean, reconciliation between France and Germany, I mean, that's a peace prize all by itself. Uh, the incorporation of the new democracy in, in the South, that's another peace prize. And even more, the incorporation of the Central and uh, Eastern European countries. I mean, breaking down the barrier between East and West uh, promoting democracy uh, in that part of Europe, uh, ending um, national territorial struggles, and also its work now in the Balkans in bringing in um, the new countries in the former Yugoslavia, uh, the outreach hand to Turkey. No, I think, uh, I mean, if, if anyone uh, really deserved uh, the Nobel Peace Prize, it must have been the European Union. Uh, uh, you know, but this was, this was caught up in in a struggle in Norway where a majority of the Norwegian people are opposed to Norwegian membership uh, in the European Union. Fine, fine, fine. Uh, this was not an effort to bring Norway to the European Union. This was a prize for the transformation of Europe from a continent of war to a continent of peace. Then we go, to, during the decision making to award the prize to this European Union, uh, was it chaired by the committee chairman, uh, yes. Tudor Yagler? Yes. 
he was the one who chaired the meeting. Yes. To, when they took the decision. Now then there comes this uh, did Mr. Tudbion Yagland, the chairman of the Nobel Peace Prize, ever decide to consult legal advice to check his inability to chair the meeting, owing to the fact that he is Secretary General of the European Council, a council which is part of the European Union. Yes, this was openly discussed uh, and dealt with, uh, and we felt uh, that uh, uh, there was no problem there, because uh, the European Union and the Council of Europe, they are entirely different, the members are very different, and they are financed in different ways, but we did discuss the issue because we wanted to be absolutely certain uh, that no criticism uh, could be raised on this. And because I raised this issue now, because many have talked to, they raised that issue. Was it like, okay, to get a job as Secretary General of the Council of Europe, of course you have to be supported by member states, European member states. And then some say, oh, maybe it was, you scratch my back, I scratch your back. You know, that is why I raised the, the issue. Yeah, yeah, but we, we did discuss this openly. But as I said, the membership is entirely different. The EU has 27 member countries. The Council of Europe has uh, almost twice as many. Uh, so, uh, no, um, the committee did not feel that there was a problem, and we discussed this also in legal terms, yes. Before we wind up this interview, I want to come home to Norway. You, are, you convinced the people that the European Union was a worthy candidate because, according to you, the Union has been active in peace building and has brought harmony among European nations. This brings me to Norwegian leadership, Prime Minister Jens uh, Stoltenberg. He showed leadership immediately after the massacre of the 22nd July 2011, where 77 innocent Norwegians were murdered by Anders Breivik. He led the country into peaceful mourning of the death. He united all living souls in the country in many ways. Do you think the Norwegian people would love to see him get the Nobel Peace Prize? And from your own point of view, does he deserve one anytime soon? <laughs> I'm certainly not going to announce on your program who will get the Nobel Peace Prize in the future because um, then I would uh, have to find a new job. <laughs> so, no, it's very easy to be nominated for the uh, Nobel Peace Prize. It's very, very difficult uh, to get it. Um, and there are only two Norwegians who have received the prize, Christian Lange and Fritjof Nansen in 1921 and 22. Uh, so I think on the Why whole... That long? Why that long? Well, I mean, it's a big world. Uh, there, uh, Norway is a small country. I mean, 99.9%, .9%, more than 99.9% .9 of the world's population are not Norwegian. So um, there, are, there, are, there are many good candidates, and there are many important and you countries around the world. is one of them. <laughs> I'm a Norwegian, uh, too, so obviously I, uh, I, I feel... Uh, the emphasis on democracy and uh, uh, reconciliation was very important, uh, but what this will lead to in the future, that's uh, not for me to, to say. Uh, finally, Professor, the Europeans would like to see African leaders cooperate with the International Criminal Court in The Hague. Yes. If African Union, now I'm not talking about European Union, African Union, did so by arresting wanted leaders like President al-Bashir of Sudan mm. and other leaders who have been indicted by the ICC. Can your committee consider them for the Nobel Peace Prize in the future, like you consider the EU? The uh, yes, of course, the committee uh, pays attention to developments all over the world and what the African Union is doing. Uh, we are watching this and the um, African Union is doing some good work. Uh, uh, in part, I think, uh, inspired by the European Union. Yes. Uh, it still has some way to go, uh, I mean, in kind of uh, uh, maintaining the basic uh, principles yeah. which the European Union has been able uh, to maintain. But um, uh, the African Union uh, is struggling and it is definitely doing uh, useful uh, things. We have to end it there, Professor. Thank you for being part of our program to shed light on these issues. Thank you. 
My pleasure.